there would be merit in a proposal from the military to limit the war geographically to the air bases, if that proposal would forestall some misguided humanitarian's intention to limit a war to obsolete iron bombs and hot lead General Kuttner stated at one meeting. At the identical time, officers thought of it very probably that the Soviet Union would reply to an atomic assault on China with retaliatory nuclear strikes. In retrospect, it isn't clear whether or not this premise was correct. Historians say American leaders, who noticed communism as a monolithic international conspiracy, didn't recognize or perceive an rising Sino-Soviet cut-up. But American Navy officers most popular that threat to the likelihood of dropping the islands. The examine paraphrased Gen. Nathan F. Twining, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as saying that if atomic bombings of air bases didn't power China to break off the battle, there can be no alternative but to conduct nuclear strikes deep into China as far north as Shanghai. He prompted that such strikes would almost certainly involve nuclear retaliation against Taiwan and possibly against Okinawa the Japanese island the place American Navy forces had been primarily based, but he stressed that if national policy is to defend the offshore islands, then the consequences had to be accepted. The examine additionally paraphrased the Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, as observing to the Joint Chiefs of Staff that nobody would mind very much the loss of the offshore islands, but that loss would mean further communist aggression. Nothing seems worth a world war until you looked at the effect of not standing up to each challenge posed. Ultimately, President Dwight D. Eisenhower pushed again towards the generals and determined to depend on typical weapons at first. But no person wished to enter one other protracted typical battle just like the Korean War, so there was unanimous belief that this would have to be quickly followed by nuclear strikes unless the Chinese communists called off this operation. Mr. Ellsberg stated he copied the total model of the examine when he copied the Pentagon Papers. But he didn't share the Taiwan examine with reporters who wrote concerning the Vietnam War examine in 1971, like Neil Sheehan of the Times. Mr. Ellsberg quietly posted the total examine online in 2017, when he revealed a guide, Doomsday Machine. Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. One of its footnotes mentions in passing that passages and pages omitted from the examine can be found on his website. But he didn't quote the examine's materials in his guide, he stated, as a result of attorneys for his writer, anxious about potential authorized legal responsibility. He additionally did little else to draw consideration to the truth that its redacted pages are seen in the model he posted. As a consequence, few observed it. One of the few who did was William Burr, a senior analyst at George Washington University's National Security Archive, who talked about it in a footnote in a March blog post about threats to use nuclear weapons in the Cold War. Mr. Burr stated he had tried greater than a decade in the past to use the Freedom of Information Act to receive a brand new declassification evaluation of the examine, which was written by Morton H. Halperin for the Rand Corporation, however the Pentagon was unable to find an unabridged copy in its information. Rand, a non-governmental assumed tank, will not be itself topic to Info Act requests.